Well, you know the problem with democracy. I, I don't think there is any country in the world which, which does not call itself democratic. All countries in the world call, call themselves democratic. It's a matter, first, of definition, uh, I think mainly of definition and of what we regard to be the essentials of democracy. We certainly ourselves regard ourselves as democratic. We understand why countries used to the multi-party system uh, don't uh, believe that a one-party system can be de democratic or are rather suspicious mm -hmm. of the one-party system. We can't, frankly, convince them by sheer argument, uh, philosophical argument, that this is possible. Perhaps the best thing is actually to see this thing in, in, in practice. What are the essentials of democracy? The essentials of democracy are that individuals should feel unharassed, that they are actually free in, the, in their society. Individual, this is the most essential thing. I never see why an individual should not feel free because of a machinery of election. And, and the two part or the one part is really basically a machinery of election. The second one, when it comes to, ma to machinery, is that an individual should feel a true choice of the people he wants to represent him in, in, in a government where it's no longer possible for people individually to participate in the government, mm -hmm. that you have to select individual representatives. No. Either sometimes you select parties, sometimes you select individuals. Now, frankly, I don't see why the thing cannot be democratic simply because sometimes you select a party, which is what the Western countries usually do, mm -hmm. and in our own case, you select an individual, the party being given, the party, party policy being given. So this is the kind of election we went through the other day, and, and we, we honestly believe we are, we, we are independent, and we really ask the old countries at least to be democratic enough, to have a free mind, and to, and to study the... the the new experiments which are taking place in, in the rest of the world and, and this experiment which is taking place in my own country. Yeah. It is democratic. We believe it is democratic. Now, uh, not very long ago, uh, you had a revolution across the water here and uh, you have a union with Zanzibar. Uh, some people might want to know why a small population like that of Zanzibar is so heavily represented in your union parliament. Well, some people want to know, both outside. Uh, uh, this question is asked not merely by non-Tanzanians. Mm. Sometimes it's asked by Tanzanians. Mm. But remember what has happened. What has happened is a merger between two countries. Mm. It's a merger between two countries. And when you are talking about countries, there is no big country and small country. Countries are equal. Uh, Zanzibar was an independent sovereign state not less sovereign than Tanzania, and Tanganyika, and Tanganyika was an independent sovereign state. And the problem is really how, how it's a, a question of constitution, how, how do you merge these two countries? And what kind of constitution do you adopt? Now, take the United States of America. Their own constitution provides for two houses. In one house, the, what is represented there are the states, and they're treated as equal. There's no big one, there's no small one. All of them are represented in the Senate by an equal number of people. Then you have the House of Representatives where then you base it on population. We did not have, we, we don't have two systems. But obviously, just as in the United States, you must take into consideration that you, the mergers are states and states must be equal. Even in our own case, although we rejected a two-house system, you can't forget that in their stateness, mm -hmm. Tanganyika and Zanzibar are equal. Now, you uh, recently attended the OAU conference in Accra. What is your opinion now what, about the, say, the status of, of African unity? That's one part of the question. And the second one is, how about unity here in East Africa? Why don't we hear any more about the East African Federation? May I answer first? The, the I think the second part of the question is probably easier and perhaps could explain my answer to the, to, the, to the first part of the question. I'm a great believer in unity. Uh, 
I, I believe in the old adage, you know, unity is strength. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is truly, it, it, is, it is strength. And, and, and the human race would be much stronger if we were united. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd get rid of a lot of problems in the world if we could, we could be united. And therefore, the human race must move towards unity. And continents like mine, a country like Tanzania must move towards greater unity, continents must move towards greater unity, and the human race must move towards unity. But the difficulties. And the difficulties are not philosophical. The difficulties are merely political. Mm. It is one of those funny things in history that a state, a state represents nothing. You know, it's sometimes ex accident of history. But once it is there, it has more power sometimes than religion, than philosophy, than all sorts of things. And, 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 and people become extremely, you know, while they accept philosophically we must be united, once you have these lines on a map and, and you have created the thing you call the nation, it's a big problem. So Africa has, in a sense, missed the first opportunity, and that was, this is the thing I said in East Africa, that in East Africa, we should have become united before we became independent, before we became separate states. We should have done that. I did advocate that in 1960. I did even go as far as saying, realizing this, I went as far as saying, Tanganyika must delay her independence, or ought to delay her independence, so that we all become independent we all become united and then we become, we, be, we take our independence. Well, this did not happen. The reasons I understand, but I felt it was a great pity that we did not become in, uh, united before we became independent. Hence now the difficulties. We now have become separately independent and as a result, as we, since we are sovereign states, it's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And for the time being, quite frankly, we must forget the possibility of a political merger in East Africa. Uh, things like economic cooperation, this we are, we are maintaining with great difficulty, but I think we'll maintain. Mm -hmm. Now, this is true of Africa. If it is true on a small scale like East Africa, where we have a common language, Swahili and English, common traditions of government, because all of us have been under, under, the, under, under British rule, we have common services, we have no railways, all railways are East Africans, and all East African railways, and all sorts of things, common currency, and all sorts of things running together. If this is difficult, obviously it's going to be much more difficult on the on the continental basis mm -hmm. and this is the context in which you must you must people must view the unity that is taking place in in uh, in africa the movement towards unity in africa this is the way you've got to assess assess uh, the the importance of the oau not from the the ideal of unity but from the difficulties of moving towards there and the, and if you do accept this then the organization of african unity is, is, is extremely significant because here you are. I mean, it's the one continent where you find this. Uh, young, feeling very much about their sovereignty, but still we meet, you know, and we, we give and take. And, and there we are. So I'm very hopeful myself. Uh, I'm not, I'm realistic enough to feel that our road to unity is going to be long, patient. Mm -hmm. But I am again feeling that given these difficulties, the OAU is a little, a small miracle.